Fried Frank's Private Equity Group advises clients on multi-billion dollar and middle market private investment fundraisings for institutional and boutique sponsors across a variety of investment strategies and structures, including buyout, real estate, credit, hedge funds, fund of funds, and secondary funds. They advise fund sponsors with regard to internal firm management and compensation arrangements, as well as legal and regulatory compliance matters for funds and their investment advisors. The group also represents institutional buyers and sellers in the acquisition and disposition of private fund interests, as well as interests in private investment firms. Contributing editor Danielle Fugazi was able to catch up with Ian afterward to talk about the fundraising environment and how the landscape has changed. I think the fundraising environment today is, is very tough. Uh, post Lehman back in 2008, I think you saw a lot of LPs pulling back their allocation um, to this asset class. But recently, it seems like every day uh, you hear about another uh, sovereign wealth fund or another pension fund that's increasing their allocation uh, to, to, to this asset class. At the same time, though, I think that there, there are a lot of funds that have been in the market for a very long time combined with funds that now, given um, these increases in allocations, are coming into the market. And so I think you have a tremendous amount of funds out there competing for um, an increased amount of dollars, but it's still uh, much more funds out there than, than dollars. So I think it's a very tough, uh, fierce, competitive fundraising environment. How does a fund stay competitive, get ahead, make themselves known? What, is there anything that anybody's doing that's creative out there? I think one of the things that people are doing, um, obviously track record is tremendously important, but I think it's, it's one of the keys are identifying the types of investors that you're targeting. So if you're targeting a sovereign wealth fund, let's say, uh, it's important, for example, to work with your council to find uh, what, what, what tax regime are they functioning under, what regulatory regime are they functioning under, so that you can come to them when, when you pitch them for dollars to say, you know, we've thought of your issues ahead of time, we've worked with council, here's how we would structure our fund to address your particular issues. So I think it's customizing your pitch to the particular investor that you're, that you're looking for. Obviously, there's your performance numbers, but I think on the legal side, you need to see, show them that you've thought about their particular legal issues, because everyone doesn't have the same legal issues. Is there anything demonstrative of your work that you can share with us today? Sure. Um, one thing that we're seeing a lot of right now are local currency denominated funds. So for example, um, we at Fried Frank recently helped raise a fund that was going to be investing in Brazil, investing in Real. Um, we also recently uh, raised a fund for a well-known sponsor that was focused on investing in Asia, specifically investing in yen. And so there were a lot of complicated issues surrounding uh, currencies. A lot of times you have limited partners uh, who their capital is denominated in one currency, yet the fund's going to invest in another currency. And so we were able to work with them to come up with the appropriate approach to deal with that. Um, another area that is very hot right now that we're helping sponsors um, raise capital for, uh, funds that are investing in distressed assets, for example, distressed real estate, as well as um, distressed debt. And there, given the nature of the investment, it's really important to structure the fund in, in an appropriate way to deal with the specific tax characteristics uh, given the nature of the investments. Um, also, I'm sure as you're aware, uh, energy is very hot right now. We're doing a lot of energy funds. Again, you need to understand the underlying nature of the energy investments. And then um, fund the funds. Uh, we recently helped uh, a middle market sponsor raise its first uh, fund the funds. And then finally, I guess, uh, managed accounts and funds of one. It's something that is becoming uh, much more prevalent in the market given um, certain investors that are willing to write big tickets. They really want their own customized fund platform. In your practice, you must see all types of issues. What types of challenges are you seeing today for the private equity firms? Um, regulatory marketing, what do you see out there? Sure. What are they facing? I think we, we, we spoke about before that it really is a tough market now. It's not the same way it was five years ago. But what I think what's interesting is that when a limited partner looks at a fund, um, not only are they considering their past dealings with that particular sponsor, they're also considering their dealings with lots of other sponsors, perhaps your client's competitors. So uh, just to give you a story, uh, recently helped a very successful, uh, well-known private equity sponsor uh, raise their third real estate fund. Um, so 
their anchor investor came to them, um, who they always had very good relationships with, and that anchor investor came with a, a tremendous amount of comments on the fund documents, uh, additional requests that they were making from a governance standpoint, from an information standpoint. And I think we, as well as the client, were very surprised in that they never had any issues with this particular client. But when we spoke with um, that investor, what they said is that, yes, we haven't had any problems with you, but we've had problems with other private equity sponsors in the past. And so now these are additional protections that we're looking for. And at Freed Frank, what we were able to do is get the right people all in a room, um, listen to their concerns, show them why perhaps there's another part of the agreement that could deal with their concerns that they already have those protections. For example, maybe they have a right to shut down the fund if they don't like the way the sponsor is, is handling themselves. But I think we were able to really listen to what they had to say, show that we were concerned about it, but at the same time why some of the things that they were asking for, maybe that another sponsor gave, just weren't practical or, or, or made sense for this, for this client. And I think one thing that's really important is to realize that it's, everything doesn't need to be adversarial or kind of a knockdown, drag out fight. I mean, you need to stand your ground for your clients, but at the same time, um, listening to what the other side has to say, uh, striking the right tone is important because um, you know these these limited partners are hopefully going to be uh, longtime partners for for our clients. Of course. So, what advice would you give a GP that was looking to raise a fund today? I think the, the number one piece of advice I'd give from the legal side is that they really need to be prepared. There's only that one chance that you have for someone to look at your fund documents, your fund terms, your fund pitch for that initial time and to hopefully get put in the pile that they want to learn more about.